In this tutorial you will learn how to use a press and a hold event using the recently learned player inputs approach. Welcome, I am Valerie. In the last episode we already created a simple movement in a 2D project. For you who have not seen the last video, let me recap it firstly. We installed a new input system, created the input action with a vector T movement, added a player input component to our player and attached a script. In this script we just read the value over the default message system of Unity and set the rigid body velocity. Using the message system of Unity for inputs is quite simple and easy. But for our now more complex tasks we need to change it a little bit. Go to the player input component and change its behavior to invoke Unity events. This will give us the opportunity to call any function we want on a button press and obtain a lot more information about how something was pressed. Let's switch to our player controller script. We will just modify our current on movement method, but note that you could now name it whatever you want. The first most important thing, make your method public or else you won't see it later on. Next we need to change the parameter. This is from type input action dot callback context, which I just call context. I will show you later where you can obtain this information. For now, to read our vector2, we can't use the get method. Instead, we use the read value method. So if you're quite new to coding, things like this seem overwhelming and you may ask yourself, how could I have known this? So let's assume I could not remember how this was done. What will I do? I google it. Grab the name of the class you want to know more about and search for it. Right here we can look at the role API reference for the new input system, which contains all available attributes and methods. In Unity our methods often used for obtaining data, so I'll look there first. And there it is, read value. It says read the value of the action, which is what we want. Whenever something is in angle brackets, and has a T in front, you usually enter the type you want to receive back. So save your script and let's go back to Unity. We now need to tell the component that this method should be called whenever a movement action is active. Open events and open the name of your action map, in my case called gameplay. You can now see all the actions in your action map, which is for now just a movement action. To add our method, click at the plus icon and drag and drop the game object where the attached script in our case the player, is. You can see it is now also possible to have this player input component on every other game object where it can maintain different inputs. Select the function by looking for the name of your script and at the top you should see the method. So if you ever find yourself can't remembering what this parameter was called, just look there for callback context and google it. But if you can't see your method here, make sure you made it public. Previously it was private and a private method will not be visible in here. You can now test your movement and everything should work like before. If you have any errors, repeat the whole process. You may have missed something. So now let's go on to the important part, the interactions. We will add a new action to our player inputs called interaction. You can leave the default action type button. Add a default binding, which is already there, and set it to the spacebar. Right below, under interactions, I'll add a tap interaction. If you just want a simple button press without hold events, you can leave this empty. But for now a press and a hold event tap and a slow tap are the best way to go. But later on you should be able to use any of these and obtain how to use it. Save and go back to your script. We need a new method for our interaction which is almost exactly like our movement method. Now, theoretically, you could read the value like we did in our movement, but we don't really care like we did with the vector2, because the value doesn't have any information we could use. Any input action has something like a life cycle. It starts and it ends, but it can end either successful or not. Be aware that I don't mean key press started and key press released, but rather the real action which is in our case the tab. If you're interested in how this works, copy this code to your project, you'll find it in the GitHub. And let me explain the logs you can see, but you don't have to, you can just watch my explanation. Go in play mode and open your console. You can find it under window, general, console. 
Unfortunately, you won't see anything now. This is because I forgot to assign the action to our new method. That's the annoying part of this approach. But watch out for the next episode. I will show you the more code-like approach for this. If you now quickly press space or the key you defined as your action, you will see the log from the started event, but also a log from the performed event. This means our function was called twice. So started is our start event and performed is our finish event, in this case a successful finish event. For an unsuccessful event, press and hold your button. Beneath the start you can now see a cancelled event, but wait, the cancelled event was fired before you released the button. To be clear, exactly after 0 0.2 seconds. Why? If you take a look in your input action, where you define the tap interaction, you can see there is a max tap duration. Any tap longer than this is not a tap anymore, therefore the event is cancelled. So for any action in our game, we can't rely on the started event, but rather on the performed event. Let's add a hold event, which is in the case a slow tap. Check the min tap duration out here. You can hold the key as long as you want, but it must be at least 0 0.5 seconds to be recognized as a slow tap. Let's check out the logs again. You see something, but it is difficult to determine which is which. So let's just add the corresponding interaction type to the logs. You can read about the used interaction attribute in the documentation. When I now hold the button, a start and the cancelled event for the tab has been locked. We already know this behavior. This was at a 0 to 2 seconds mark. Right after it, the slow tab starts. Just after I release the button, the performed event is called. Our hold interaction was successful. I'll hold the space key for even longer, so you can see how the performed event logs later, after release. Now try on your own to release the key between 0 to 2 seconds, after the start event, and before the min tap duration, the 0 to 5 seconds mark. A cancelled method will be locked. Let me add some basic UI to show you this better. One side information. When adding a canvas, Unity always adds the default event system. This will lock errors. But you can simply switch to the new one by clicking this button. But I don't need UI inputs for now, so I'll delete it. I'll just add some very basic UI text. I will show and hide accordingly to what happens. There will be the tap text when I successfully tap the button, a hold text when I am currently holding it down, and a release text the moment I release the hold button. This will also show if the release was successful, we hold it the minimum duration, or cancelled. In the awake function of our script we will hide all of these texts. You can now see I made a successful tap event. Now I hold and release. And if I get the right point it will also show the cancel text after release. Basically that's it. Based on newly gained knowledge, the documentation and some experiments, you may find a way to implement your own use cases now. But if you are like me and more into coding than linking actions to code methods via the frontend, or you forget it way too often, you should watch the next episode. With the newly gained knowledge, it will now be easier for you to use the coding approach via a generated input class. If you enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.